different parts of the image, so like there. And once you've done that, really weird sort of elliptical design, but also again, select and deselect. Select a layer in Affinity Photo, then go to the Rectangular Marquee Tool, and then click and drag to create a rectangular selection. You can also hold down the Shift key and create additional. And I'm just gonna add two or three, and you can create them thin or like that, maybe very thin as well, and maybe a lot wider. So I've got this selection. Now I'm gonna go for Select and Invert. I want to invert it all so the outside is selected, not that central area here. Then Edit and Cut. And I'm gonna repeat these steps all the way through this tutorial. So with this, I've got that, and I can go to Edit and then down to Impaint. Now the result will vary. Sometimes it becomes super colorful. Sometimes you might end up with white or black effects. Whole range of different options are possible. Something like that. A very surreal, weird colored effect, saturated as well. Just undo that. So just quickly undo, and again, we're back there. And we can move this selection. So you can decide, you know what, let's just move this to say a different position. Now the result, may be very, very different, even though ostensibly it should be much the same. So again, select and invert, edit and cut, and edit again and in paint. And you can see this time, the result is very different. Hardly any sort of greens and weird sort of color effects in this. Now you've got a fairly clear, obviously of all the faces, still quite surreal. Now I want to add to this selection, but instead of the vertical, I want horizontal. So I've got this selection, simply, Hold down the shift, go to rectangular marquee tool and click and drag. Now make certain you're not in the inverted state. It's quite possible you do it and suddenly you think, oh, that's strange, it's actually removing. And that's definitely a clue that you are not in the correct selection at this point. Okay, so we've got this now. You've got some horizontal, you've got some vertical. And the exact same as before, you can always then go to select and invert. And then edit and cut and then edit and again in paint. And the result is that very abstract, very unusual sort of Dave Hockney like image, I think. Well, also what you can do is you can use select and then down here to feather. I'm just gonna use that. Now don't increase it too much, but maybe go for say, say 12. I'm just gonna use 12 and click apply and again select and then again invert, edit and cut and then edit and again in paint. The only problem is you get a weird sort of white lines here, but I still think visually it's quite interesting effect. If you want to apply some blending modes, fade effects, etc., unfortunately, in paint doesn't have that feature. Don't know why, but it doesn't. But a workaround is layer and then down to duplicate. Now you can apply the various, let's just go this time. Instead of that one, I'm going to use elliptical just to show you, you can use other things as well. So just again up there. Hold down the shift, create this instead. So this time, elliptical, and I'm just gonna go over different parts of the image, so like there. And once you've done that, again, go to select and invert, edit and cut, and again, edit and in paint. And this time, you can see you get this really weird sort of elliptical design, but also again, select and deselect. And now, of course, you've got a layer here, you can just go over here, blend modes, just change it to darken, multiply, color burn, lighten, etc. So maybe go with that and also change, if you want, the opacity as well. Now you also can, you know, combine it with some effects, maybe blur it, maybe apply some deform. All those sort of effects can be added into this. So filter and then distort and deform and just add some additional pins and warp it a bit. What you can also do, of course, you can go to layer and you can merge it down. So with this, you can go here again, go here and layer and duplicate. So you've got the duplicate and then just again, go to here, selection and reselect, or of course, create a completely different selection, perfectly reasonable as well. And then again, edit and cut. Then go again to edit and in paint. And again, select and deselect. Now you've got a very abstract design, which again, of course, because it's on a layer, you can go over here and you can change that, maybe um, lighten, overlay, etc. And then again, layer and merge down. You can also use more complex selections. Sometimes the results are not great, but let's just go over here 
to Selection Brush Tool. I'm going to set the width here to about 48 and quickly add a selection. Now, the result again can vary in thousands of different ways. But again, select and invert, edit and cut. And then again, edit and again down here to impaint. And the end result is a quite abstract image using that selection brush. Another option, use a letter or a shape. So I've got this shape here. What you can then do is go to select and selection from layer. That creates a selection there and then make certain you select the A or whatever it is and delete it. You've got that selection and then you can do exactly the same as before. So select and then invert and again, edit and cut. And then again, edit and then down to inpaint. And now you've got a weird A effect in your inpainted image. Another option, maybe go to filters and then down to blur and Gaussian blur. Just blur it slightly, don't go for 100, but maybe something like this. Maybe about nine or 10 and then apply. And then again, select and then invert, edit and cut, edit and then inpaint. This time, a very blurry effect, maybe a slightly glass distortion effect inside Affinity Photo. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. You're probably gonna ask, well, what can you do with this? Well, I think it's great for some truly abstract artworks, and I've obviously just used it with one image, but of course you could use it with all kinds of images, maybe gradients, maybe use it with pattern designs, and much, much more to create some surreal designs. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Bye.